Crusader Kings 3's Royal Court is the first major expansion to the game, and finally after a full year and a half, we have some new and interesting things to learn. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick and easy to follow overview of Royal Court's mechanics, teaching you how to behave at court whether you're a courtier or the royal of the court themselves, so to speak. And yes, I do mean the royal themselves. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you leave a like and share your thoughts with me in the comments below. And now, a guide to everything new in Crusader Kings 3 Royal Court. Most new Paranox DLC tends to come with significant updates or additions to various aspects of the game, and Royal Court is no different here. But what sets this expansion apart is that, while prior expansions normally update a certain amount of set faction menus, Royal Court actually gives a completely new 3D space to observe, and many of the additions surrounding this DLC is related to this new courtroom. So let's say you don't want to begin with the most obligations at once, so we're not picking the established courts of the Romans or the Iobids. No, let's instead take a look at the court of the King of Castile, and his somewhat up-and-coming court if we can put it that way. As a king title or higher, you are one of the lucky few of CK3 with your own court. Now, before, the court would simply be another tab in the menu, showing you essentially more or less everyone who lived in your realm and who were not your vassals. Now though, we get access to this button right here, which takes us to our very own physical courtroom and nearly every member of your court will also be physically present here, including yourself nicely seated in the middle of the room back there, and a potential spouse if you have tidy proverbial royal knot. But don't think that this update doesn't come with its own share of menus, and there are essentially three of them within this room itself. The first is the one we're in right now, giving us an overview of the court itself. From here, we can have a little fun with a completely new camera and photo mode, which lets you take pictures from various locations of the court. In addition, we have this little button, the hold court option. This is one of the most important features of royal court, as it, you guessed it, allows you to hold court. But what does this holding court even mean? Well, it essentially gives your subjects the ability to come forth with their issues and needs, grievances essentially, to which you then must respond one way or another. Sometimes people are angry with you, putting you in a position where you might lose it all, other times two individuals might be rivals and ask you to condemn the other, but whatever the issue, these are opportunities for you to gain favor with your people perhaps spending gold or other resources in order to gain fame or renown, and indeed, Court Grandeur. And Court Grandeur is the name of the game here, and is a feature we'll find in the Court's second menu. Court Grandeur is essentially the greatness and splendor of your court, and you can easily see both how nice it is on the main bar in the menu, and compare it to other courts around the world. What you need to pay attention to here is the level system, ranging from 1 to 10. Each level unlocks new perks for your realm, including new abilities for your counselors and various bonuses related to kingdom management, which makes it easier to rule. In essence then, a higher court level means an easier time, and you should always strive to increase your court's grandeur. So how do we do that? Well, the most tangible options are first and foremost to manually upgrade it, and you can do that by investing in better locals and servants. But living a life of luxury also means spending more money each month on upkeep. Of course, it costs to be king and you'll have to balance your ability to pay for these things with your need to be the envy of the world in addition to receiving the many benefits that come with it. Other ways to increase court grandeur includes accepting swearing of fealty from subjects and our reason to enter the third menu of this courtroom, namely court artifacts. Court artifacts are items and objects that you can use to spice up your courtroom to make it look unique, but it's also one of the best ways to raise your court grandeur over time, as well as receiving other bonuses to various parts of the game. Court artifacts come in several types, so some are banners you can hang on your wall, and others are items you can present on the royal showroom floor. The rarer the artifact, the better the bonuses you receive, and you'll have to factor in the benefits of each item to fit with whatever goals you're trying to achieve at any given time. So how do you come about acquiring such artifacts, you may ask? Well, artifacts can come into your possession in several ways. Easiest of these are by having an artificer craft them for you, and you'll receive options to make various items depending on which character is currently present at your court. These characters will be so-called inspired characters, and they'll always craft you an item in the category they themselves want to. Accepting such an offer will begin a quest chain where several options will determine the quality of the artifact made, but also the skill of the artificer has a lot to say here, and the skill level varies on a 5 level spectrum from terrible to excellent, with most characters beginning around somewhere between poor and good. If you don't want to wait though, it's also possible to commission artifacts yourself, but these items will usually be of lower quality, so keep that in mind. Once they're finished, you're free to display them in your courtroom for all to see, or even wear them on your person, which is another aspect entirely, yet falls into the same category. You can now outfit yourself with several items, among them weapons and armor, which gives you various buffs and bonuses and really makes that royal statement. 
Having artifacts made is not the only way to acquire them though. You can take artifacts from other characters after battles for example, like I did when I captured an enemy standard banner. Further, it's also possible to inherit items from other family members and indeed have claim on them if other characters own a piece of treasure you really should be owning. In other words, there's a whole lot of ways to come into possession of nice loot and to spice up that courtroom of yours to make it look a lot more fun and vibrant. However, being king is not the only way to relate yourself to court, as being a vassal creates a completely different experience with other opportunities and challenges. Instead of holding court, vassals and subjects may swear loyalty to their monarchs once per the overlord's lifetime, exchanging loyalties and perhaps other gifts as well for renown, prestige, and the favor of the monarch. In addition, you may ask the ruler for extra satisfaction in a wide variety of fields, from council positions to titles and help with controlling your lands. The monarch is free to object to your proposals of course, and you are free to try again with a success chance based on your skills. In addition, we now have a completely new courtier menu, with Royal Court introducing a revamped and expanded version of the courtier system positions from CK2. Now you can appoint anything from a royal physician to a master of the horse, hunt, bodyguards, a royal antiquarian who will maintain your artifacts lest they be destroyed, a food taster, and more from among your more powerful vassals and lower courtiers. Again, while these positions are nice to both give away and hold and provide various bonuses to both master and servant, they also cost money to upkeep, so always keep this fact in mind when hiring courtiers into these mostly prestigious positions. And I say mostly because, well, you can always make one of your courtiers a court jester, which is perhaps not always what they wish to be the most. Moving on to something completely different now, but still relevant to your court, are new cultural systems. You see, in Royal Court, CK3 has a completely revamped cultural system. Cultures are now based on several pillars and traditions, and every culture begins with unique traits and features to them. In the case of Castile, we have a so-called bellicose ethos, meaning we are warlike and provide several traits to our culture. What's more is that this is directly affecting the culture at court, known as court type. As Castile then, we may choose between having a warlike or intrigue-based court, again providing us with benefits depending on what we wish to focus on. As the first in Crusader Kings, it's now also possible to either develop your own culture by incorporating several types of traditions or merge your own culture with another, creating a so-called hybrid or divergent culture. The former allows you to create an even more unique culture by spending large amounts of prestige points, so it will likely take you a few decades before this becomes an option. The latter has you diverge cultures by merging various aspects of them together, picking out a new ethos, a brand new color, a number of your own traditions and pillars, language, and even court aesthetics depending on the cultures already available in your realm. All of this costs a massive amount of prestige, but if your political situation changes completely, say you're content with having conquered Iberia and wish to create the richest land in the world, you may now change your traditions to reflect that. As you can see, we now have another completely new cultural feature, namely language, and it works like this. Every character speaks a language based on where they're from, and this language will also likely be the language of the court especially if you're the monarch. However, it's actually possible to learn more languages, which not only will allow you to change the court language, but will net you approval ratings of subjects that speak that language. You may even learn more than two languages if you unlock the appropriate skills, so the possibilities are many. But how do you actually learn them? Well, you need to have a courtier in your country who speaks something else than you. And further, you need to complete a learn language scheme whose success rate depends on your own skills, perks, and dynasty legacies at the same time. In other words, Royal Court allows you to become a truly cultured person. And if that's not what a court is all about, then your name is probably not King Sancho of Castile. And that was a quick guide to Crusader Kings 3 Royal Court. Whether we're talking about cultural changes, artifacts, or indeed the entire court system and the way the gameplay changes based on being a vassal or a monarch is indeed a lot to take in. So I hope you enjoyed this overview and tutorial on the new features. Let me know if you're excited for the additions coming with Royal Court or if you have any questions. And if you found the video helpful, I really hope you leave a like and consider supporting me on Patreon for more awesome content. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!